Kicking up against the wall. That's a drill that a lot of people practice, uh, but how much do they get out of it? The reality is that it's a useful drill, but it's often abused. And it is abused because people rely on uh, just uh, kicking up against the wall instead of uh, on the, rely on the wall, as opposed to trying to learn and calib from the, these attempts and calibrate their kick. In these three progressions that I will give you in this video, you will be able to slowly progress through and uh, while you will always be using the wall, over time you will be learning how to rely on your hands in order to find balance as opposed to, to the wall in order to prevent you from falling over. In the very first uh, attempt though, in the very first progression, I don't care about uh, how you kick up, as long as you bring yourself upside down. Now, the setup uh, that you are having when you're kicking up uh, will be personal, and I suggest you always keep it the same. I usually suggest a narrow downward dog, three leg downward dog, but uh, if you follow a different approach, it is still valid and can be applied here. So, hands uh, should be near the wall. Don't bring them too close to the wall because it gets hard. Don't go too far away from the wall because again it will get hard as you will end up having to go into a deep split uh, position. So hands on the, on the floor and uh, you lift one leg up and from there you kick up. I don't mind if the hips uh, touch even the wall. I don't mind if you make a big noise with the wall but uh, I want you to be coming up and it's important to be consistent in terms of your attempts. So you don't kick up 10 times and you find the wall only one or two. You want to be always finding the wall. I will demonstrate that version now. You can see that uh, my attempts uh, were quite raw, quite rough, but uh, I would still uh, be able to bring myself upside down. Some people that uh, have a problem of uh, getting there may need a little bit of support uh, from uh, the foot that is on the floor, which will look like that. So this foot can get elevated a little bit and uh, find the wall this way. But uh, one tendency that is quite common and uh, for a purpose I demonstrated in the first attempt is having both feet touching the wall. While initially this is not a problem, we want to uh, break up this habit as soon as possible. So in the ideal scenario here, we are touching the wall with only one foot and the second foot stays away from the wall. Now in the second progression, this uh, separation of the legs becomes very, very important. Not only we want to keep the legs apart, but we want to keep them of even distance over between the hips. So if my hips are here and the first leg is there, the second leg has to be in even distance uh, uh, from the hips. For this drill, it is important uh, to slow down the kick. Now, we definitely don't want to see the hips going towards the wall. We want to have the hips staying over the shoulders. And uh, for that purpose, uh, a lot of stability will be, or some stability anyway, will be required from your lower back and abdominals. So complementary work might be needed in order for you to achieve that. So a successful attempt of uh, uh, this second progression would be like that. You probably saw that uh, as I was going through the repetitions, my kicks were getting slower and slower. And uh, in order to slow down your kicks, uh, you obviously need the shoulder stability. The hips will need to do a lot more in terms of balancing if the shoulders are, are not strong enough. This of course comes with time. Of course also complementary work can help. Now, it is very important to monitor the hips in this position, but also the setup of the spine. If we are to come into a spine extension, chances are that either the hips will not come over the shoulders or if they come, they will go quickly over. So I will encourage you to start paying more attention now into the setup of the upper back, which we want to be as um, neutral or even a little bit protracted with the scapula as opposed to having the scapula retracted 
which promotes spine extension. So in neutral or protracted scapula is uh, the setup of the upper body that we want to um, work with in this uh, and the following attempts. Now, as uh, this drill becomes slower and slower, you will find uh, uh, that uh, naturally you will want to balance, but I will uh, encourage you to refrain from uh, running before you can walk. You want to have this very consistent. And uh, when you're ready, you will be progressing to the third drill where you will be stopping before you touch the wall. Now the stop has to be intentional as much as possible and last uh, a couple of seconds. So I will demonstrate uh, this progression. And this is the ideal scenario. Now, of course, uh, again, this will require extra work from the fingertips, from the shoulders, and uh, improve proprioception altogether. One thing I will uh, suggest uh, you do in this drill until you start uh, having a high percentage of successful attempts is that if you lose your balance and you touch the wall, to take this opportunity to still have uh, a few seconds of balance. And to do that, I would suggest that you reset your breath and prepare for the balance. Don't rush it. So let's say that I'm working towards this third progression and I don't manage to stop before I touch the wall. I will inhale, hold my breath, maybe even take one or two breaths to recover my breath. Then inhale, hold my breath and shift my shoulders up, shift my hips towards the middle of the room and try to find balance there for a couple of seconds. I will demonstrate how that would look like. So in this opportunity, I'm managing to accumulate a little bit of uh, flying time, but uh, although the, the, success, the attempt was not successful, uh, and uh, as a result, build up uh, my proprioception and uh, my, the requirements that are needed between connecting all different parts of the body.